Hi, this is Gary Auden. I'm bringing you an Educast, Enterprise Communications for the SMB, Making the Best Decision. With me today is Chris Cameron, President and CEO of a company called Accent, and he's going to be our credible source of information for all the comments we're going to have today. And as we always do, we're going to talk about what we talk about. When you're a company that has communications goals, lots of people say, oh, that's great features, but there's much more to communication than just picking a set of great features. The second point is, how am I going to pay for this? Should I buy it? Should I subscribe to it? Should I have a hybrid combination? There are multiple configurations that can fit any business model. But if we don't have reliable and available service, then why bother dealing with it at all? And most SMBs do not have a large staff. They never seem to have enough. So they really would like to have a service that is outsourced, reliable, and does not require a lot of staff involvement to make it work. And that gets into the last point, limiting risk. Because one of the points about VoIP communications today is lots of companies can start this kind of service because there's many back offices available to them. What risks do we have and how do we deal with those risks? So, Chris, let's start off with the first slide. What do you think are the most important points on this slide for us to know? Yeah, thanks, Gary. Uh, well, it, it's critical for the SMB uh, to have a telecommunication solution that, that is, uh, has robust feature set. So we've got to have the necessary features to get work done and to communicate. Uh, and, and of course, service has to be reliable, but many SMBs today are looking to operate in a, in a very dynamic environment. They need to change with their market, and they need to change with uh, you know, the industry. And, and that really gets to the flexibility and scalability of uh, communication solutions today. Uh, SMB should be choosing a uh, communication solution that can uh, move and, and turn on a dime with their market needs or their business needs. Um, and of course, it also has to fit the budget. It has to be at an affordable price. And, and you know, it's got to be something that isn't um, hampering to the business and something that doesn't uh, you know, put the business in a situation where they can't be flexible. So that affordable price, flexibility, and scalability, that growth as well, they all kind of work together. Um, and you know, of course, uh, you want something that is fully supported uh, on a 24-7 basis by the, uh, either a, um, a support partner or the actual service provider. The option of wired and or mobile connections uh, is very critical today as well. Uh, the SMB and many businesses uh, operate today in a very uh, dispersed environment. Might have people in the field, people in remote locations, people working from home, etc. They need to be connected to the business communications uh, network uh, all the time or when needed and then be able to be reached and reach their customers and reach the internal employees in a moment's notice all from one platform. Now we've talked about features and of course they're mandatory but I think features that are easy to use and that people can want to use are really important. What do you think? Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Gary. Um, what you uh, have to have is, as I mentioned previously, that full feature set. That's a mandatory thing. But the features have to be easy to use, and it's got to be intuitive. And what does that mean? That means that I don't have, shouldn't have to read a manual to be able to transfer a call or put a call on hold or the dreaded conference call. So an operation has to be intuitive. The phone has to blend with the feature set that the service or the PBX provides or the, or the communication network provides. And that experience needs to be comfortable and, uh, and intuitive for the user. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, applications and we have a lot of different uh, uh, things competing for our time. And uh, to have to learn a whole new interface or a whole new a uh, set of applications just to make a phone call or operate my voicemail uh, is more of a challenge than most of us want to take on today. I, I, th I think partly what you're saying is it shouldn't be disruptive. Now let's move on to pricing. And pricing gets into cash flow, and cash flow gets into what kind of money do I use to get the service? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, today it's all about uh, do, I, do I buy, do I rent, do I lease, do I, or do I you know, sign up for a service, or do I enroll in a service? And um, I always, when I'm uh, talking to business owners about this decision, I always ask them a, a very, you know, business-driven question, and that is, you know, 
what would you rather do with your capital? Would you rather put it into hardware and software and services, or would you rather invest that into marketing, sales, et cetera? And that's a question for the business owner to decide. Um, and then that can oftentimes drive the type of purchase decision that's made. Uh, so, uh, you know, do you, would you rather operate on an OPEX environment where it's more like paying your, your electric bill or paying your gas bill uh, for a new communication system? And that's more of an OPEX environment. Or do you want to uh, invest money into a, a, an on-premise system or an on-premise solution and then have more of a CapEx uh, situation where maybe you're depreciating that over several years? Uh, so there's a lot of options in the marketplace today. Um, do I lease? Do I subscribe to a service? Uh, that is the question that each individual business has to decide, but there are some very strong trends in the industry toward delivering OPEX services and getting away from that CapEx model so that um, businesses can take their capital and invest it in growing their business or growing operations as opposed to you know, dumping it into uh, communications equipment. The next slide gets into configuration options, and it seems to me that when you're talking about your money, it also gets into what configurations match that, like an OPEX versus CapEx configuration. Yeah, one size definitely does not fit all in the uh, telecommunications environment, just like one size doesn't fit all in, in many industries and with many services and solutions that you might purchase as a business. And that OPEX versus CapEx role definitely uh, layers right on top of the type of configuration or the type of deployment that you might have. Uh, so, you know, that might be an on-premise system, which is more CapEx, uh, generally speaking, uh, on-premise systems are more CapEx intensive. Cloud-based services are more OpEx uh, driven. However, uh, the emergence of hybrid solutions that blend both of those, those on-premise and cloud together, uh, create interesting opportunities for, uh, for businesses. And, you know, uh, not all cloud-based services, not all on-premise systems are the same. So there are configuration options within those, uh, those, uh, those deployment options as well. And uh, I might just add that we are seeing a, a trend of on-premise systems deployed in an OPEX model as well, uh, away from traditional uh, leases or, or rental models. So uh, there's a lot of different options out there as, as obviously as we're getting at, and one size definitely does not fit all. And it's important for each organization to um, decide what the best fit for their, their business is uh, going forward. I'd like to bring up another issue, and that's the word reliability. And a lot of people say, oh, that's great. I'm reliable. But what we're really talking about is availability. People talk about the four nines, the five nines. What's important about this, this subject? So when you talk about uh, business continuity or, or even disaster recovery, and then, of course, to your point, Gary, reliability and then availability, a lot of those terms get blended and they kind of thrown around as, as interchangeable. And they're really not, as you mentioned. Uh, so there's business continuity and then disaster recovery, but there's also reliability, meaning, you know, how often uh, does my service or does my system fail or how often, how long, how often is it up, I should say. But then you look at availability, as the slide says here, and, you know, that's a measurement of, okay, what are my mean time between failures, you know, how often between failures do I have, and then how often on mean time to restore, how quickly am I back up and running if I have a failure. And, you know, in today's world and in telecommunications, uh, every customer should really challenge any service providers or assist solution providers to make sure that there is an SLA in place and they're meaning some minimum form of SLA. Uh, four nines, five nines, those are very good industry-based SLAs. And, uh, you know, those should be in place in a, via means to deliver that availability. Um, if you don't have an SLA or your SLA is, is less than a four or even a three nine, um, you know, I would, I would strongly challenge a service provider or solution provider to, you know, uh, you meet those, that criteria to be you know, within industry standards. Let's assume we do have reasonable reliability and availability, and we're happy with that. But another question is, is where am I covered? You know, this geographic fixed line access, and there's even greater mobile access. What should an SMB be considering in those areas? Well, an SMB needs to be covered uh, for wherever they're going to be operating, but they also need to be thinking long term. You know, if I want to uh, expand, or if I you know, suddenly have a market opportunity in a different geographic region, I need to be able. To, you know, my telecommunications services and my my communication platform needs to be able to expand as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, making sure that you partner with uh, an organization that delivers a, a, a large geographic footprint. I would say table stakes today would be at minimum the continental United States. 
even if not including uh, you know, all of North America. But then how they deliver that service, can they support not only a, a quality desktop phone experience, but do they also support a mobile experience via mobile apps or mobile or, or you know, um, uh, soft phone applications on the desktop, et cetera. And that enables businesses to have that uh, wider geographic footprint and to ensure that they're gonna be able to provision phone numbers or work from home, uh, teleworking uh, applications at a moment's notice as their business requires that. One of the problems I see for the community we're talking to is they generally don't have a large staff. They have some IT people. If they had anybody in telecom, they're probably retired. And I, as an SMB, don't want to keep hiring more people. I may not be able to find them or afford them. How does dealing with the service actually help me with my staffing? So the SMB in hiring and staffing, it, it's uh, very much like a small market baseball team where every hire and every, or every uh, a new hire needs to be a really great one and really fit, uh, get, provide a lot of value to the organization. And a lot of times uh, that value is provided in other places in managing telecommunications and communication services. So uh, any service that an organization would enroll in needs to be 100% uh, fully supported, fully managed, and administrated, uh, needs to be monitored remotely, and then also provide the continual uh, software or service enhancements. And this really allows any existing IT staff or any administrative staff to be focused on more value-added uh, functions and value-added roles than just you know making moves, ads, and changes to a, to a phone system or a phone service. I'm sure if we, we took a uh, poll of most uh, SMBs out there, they would say that their employees would have, you know, have provide a much higher return if they weren't managing the phone system and they were doing something else related to growing the business or, or uh, you know, enabling the business for success. One of the issues that comes into the smaller businesses is risk. And the problem with risk is how do they respond to it? Who are they depending on to deliver the service that reduces the risk for them? What kind of recommendations do you have there? So one of the uh, elements of the industry when it comes to the proliferation of uh, you know, internet services, network services, et cetera, et cetera is that it's very um, easy for new VoIP service providers to pop up uh, within the industry on a regular basis. Uh, what you want to be doing as a uh, SMB in the market is making sure that you're the partners and the service providers that you're partnering with are, uh, you know, very knowledgeable and experienced as VoIP service providers and that they own their own network or they own pieces and they own infrastructure and pieces of their network so that you can ensure that you're working with the actual service provider and not maybe just a reseller or a white labeler of services. Uh, that service provider should be uh, financially strong. They should have the capital and the backing to ensure that they can continue to innovate and grow their network and respond when market changes uh, require that. And they should have a wide range of customers across many different industry verticals uh, so that they can relate to your business and they can fix those pain points that may exist or solve those business challenges that your specific organization might have specific to your uh, vertical market or your industry. And it's very important as a telecommunications provider that uh, they're able to apply uh, the features and benefits um, in the industry to enable the SMB's business to succeed and not just to deliver a, a broad feature set that nobody's going to take advantage of. Well, let's talk about what Accent offers. Accent offers a service called Voice One, and you have a business edition of that. Let's focus on that for a moment. Yeah, so the uh, Voice One business edition is a uh, platform that we developed to focus specific on the, the SMB market. Uh, we identified that uh, there was a very strong feature set and a very strong kind of momentum toward a specific uh, set of features and functions that SMBs are looking for today. And uh, the business edition is designed to deliver that. Uh, we can deliver the business edition in either a cloud or an on-site model. We'll talk about that a little bit more about our on-site here in a moment. Uh, but it offers a lot of the features and functions that an SMB is looking for to deliver uh, many of the value points that we were talking about previously. So that mobile app access, voicemail transcription, SMS text messaging, which we see as a very strong emerging trend in the business, the, in, the, in telecommunications, the ability to text enable any business phone number that we deliver and allow uh, users to text with the general public is very strong. 
And then the, the, the standard features that some of us take for granted, like ACD or hunt groups, uh, scheduling and routing of calls, personal phone numbers, et cetera. All of those features need to be there for the SMB because many, many uh, small businesses are still operating in a more traditional telecommunications environment where they need to be able to park calls, pick up calls, et cetera, see who's holding on line one, line two, whatnot. And it's very important that as, an emer as a VoIP service, as, as the SMB is evolving to uh, take on a, a VoIP service, that those features be able to carry over to those services. We have a map map of your national footprint. What's the advantage to me as an SMB for having all those locations and support centers? Well, it, uh, it's very important that, uh, you know, as a network or a VoIP service provider, that, uh, you know, we be geographically distributed so that in, in case there's an issue in one part of the, uh, of the United States that that failover occurs and, uh, you know, we can, you know, somewhat pick up the slack. But it's also important for for a distribution of, of resources to be able to uh, distribute, uh, you know, network load and also just uh, call distribution, et cetera, across the, the country so that there isn't one bottleneck or one main point where all traffic is routed through. And so what we do is we will we disperse our network assets across the U.S. in different uh, strategic locations so that we can ensure that the uh, traffic is distributed and that uh, you know, there aren't any bottlenecks or, or single points of failure across the network. You mentioned there are three options that you offer. Would you focus on each one of those a moment and then we'll go back in detail? Yeah, so with Voice One, we offer three deployment options, but one consistent user experience across all of those options. So we have your traditional cloud model, which is your fully hosted and which is our fully hosted and managed cloud telephony service, and then we have an on-site uh, model, which is uh, deploying the same feature set and functions that you that you deliver, receive in our cloud, but just as an on-site uh, telephony as a service. And then our hybrid model combines both the on-site and the cloud to deliver the best of both worlds. And the idea, uh, regardless of option that's deployed, is that it's complete feature parity, so you get the same feature set across all uh, deployment options. It's a fully managed service by Accent, so we take care of everything uh, that the service might require. And then it's all they're all delivered as a monthly operational expense. So even if I'm delivering in an, an on-site or a hybrid environment, uh, we, don't, we don't ask the customer to purchase any equipment up front. We deliver everything as a monthly uh, operational uh, subscription service. Something that I hadn't thought about before when we were talking is because you have a common user experience, I as a customer can choose to start with one of these configurations and move to another without affecting my users. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we have a lot of customers that might start with on-site and then migrate to a hybrid environment and then fully cloud eventually, or some that deploy as cloud, but then for you know whatever general specific reason, they might have to roll out a hybrid location as well. So I can migrate through those and, and um, move through those options, and we don't penalize the customer for that. It, it's a very straightforward migration process that, uh, you know, it provides that flexibility and that scalability that we were speaking about previously that SMBs require. Let's talk about the on-site version for a moment. Yeah, so uh, the Voice One on-site uh, server that you see pictured here on the slide, uh, this is the actual UC uh, device that we will deploy on-site. It's a solid-state appliance that Accent actually designs and, and assembles, and it is designed to deliver uh, a full telephony experience as a monthly subscription service. So the customer doesn't purchase this appliance. Uh, we deploy it, we fully support it and warranty it as part of the subscription service. And then it can integrate with Accent's cloud if need be for that hybridized environment. So the idea here was to be able to deliver that on-site experience that some customers are still still need for maybe security reasons or uh, you know whatever business need might be driving that but still be able to deliver that monthly subscription service and have it completely managed and supported by Accent's team. You have some diagrams, and let's start off with the on-site diagram and then add in hybrid and the cloud in the next two slides. Yeah, so what you see here is a, is a you know, true traditional kind of on-site deployment where I have the voice one server on the network and then communicating with the various devices that um, you know, might be uh, used by our uh, customer. Got the IP phones, it supports analog devices, conference phones, 
uh, provides a user web portal for the users to access and uh, check their voicemail, uh, see call history, uh, you know, uh, manage conference calls from a visual interface. And then it provides a uh, mobile app access as well via the network. The Voice One server can leverage uh, traditional PRI or POTS lines and SIP trunking as well to connect to the public telephone network. So one of the applications that we find the Voice One server is a great fit for is if uh, a customer, a prospective customer, is in a contract for you know maybe a PRI or a couple PRIs or some POTS lines, and they can't migrate away from their existing carrier, but they still want to take advantage of a subscription uh, on-premise service. The Voice One server is a great fit there because we can leverage those legacy services, those legacy PRIs and POTS lines, et cetera, until uh, the customer is able to exit out of those contracts. Let's add in the cloud now. So if we need to, we can actually network the Voice One server via the internet with, the, with our Voice One cloud, and then we can deliver uh, remote uh, IP phones and uh, a mo remote mobile app uh, employees from the cloud. So to create that hybrid environment in the cloud can actually function as failover as well for those local uh, devices that we discussed earlier. And you can see here in this diagram, not only is it connecting to the Voice One server, but it's a failover uh, connection to the public telephone network as well. Let's move on and just talk about the cloud-only solution. Yeah, and so this is more of a, a traditional cloud deployment. Uh, so in this scenario, we are uh, delivering all telephony services via the Voice One Cloud. The Voice One Cloud is connected to the public telephone network and provides all that local and long distance and 800-based calling that a business might need. And then it, via the internet, delivers out to uh, local IP phones, those analog devices and conference phones, web portal and the mobile apps that we talked about previously, but then out to uh, remote users as well. And the Voice One Cloud is available from any internet location and we configure the, uh, our customers' devices and, and mobile apps to uh, securely connect to our cloud via secure credentials. So anywhere that user is functioning on the internet, if they want to, they can connect into the cloud and they can leverage the telecommunication services the customer has available to them. I like this next slide because what it says to me as an SMB is, if I own anything on the screen here, I can easily connect it to your service. Is that correct? Absolutely. There's been a, a massive proliferation of uh, SIP-based uh, VoIP devices that we've seen in the last several years in the industry. And we want customers to be able to leverage those investments that, that, that they've made. So if I've purchased, you know, 50 Polycom phones or Cisco phones and I want to, or, or a couple hundred Yaling phones, and I want to be able to take those from my current service provider to, to Accent on the Voice One platform, that's no problem. And, and so that flexibility, again, that flexibility that we talked about previously at the SMB uh, is, is really critical to them. We want to make sure that we continue that story. And so, uh, you know, being able to re-leverage an investment that I've already made uh, on the Voice One platform, we think is, is very critical and provides a lot of value to our customers. Let's talk about your service plans. You have mobile only, standard, and premises. Can I get one or all of these at the same time? So the service plans are designed to be able to mix and match as a customer needs. So I could have, uh, as a 50-user business, I could have, you know, 25 standard, 25 mobile only, or any any version of, uh, you know, the plan the uh, um, the plans that I'd like. Uh, we feel that the mobile only is, uh, you know, a very critical plan to have available for our customers. We see many customers today uh, when we're talking to them saying, I've got this uh, smartphone device, Android, iPhone, uh, can I leverage that? Why do I have to invest in handsets or why do I want to use these old handsets that I have when I've got a perfectly good communication device right here in my pocket? We say absolutely, uh, but we don't uh, skimp on the features when it comes to the mobile only. So you know, our standard uh, license, which is a full uh, telephony feature set, translates uh, to the mobile only in a one-for-one -one feature. Uh, the only difference is that you're using the mobile app as opposed to a you know, physical desk phone. And then for those customers that want to include a, uh, a desk phone uh, in, as part of the subscription, we offer the Premier license, which we actually bundle the uh, Grandstream 2135 IP phone in with that license as well. Now, most of us don't know Accent. Would you talk about your company a little bit? Yeah, Accent's been around for quite a while now. We were founded in 1991, and we have our uh, uh, tradition for about uh, over 20 plus years as an on-premise uh, communications uh, solutions provider. So we were uh, installing and integrating uh, large PBXs in the 90s. We were, we were a very large Fujitsu uh, partner, and then 
in the beginning in 2000s, we became a uh, more of a VoIP, service, VoIP system provider, uh, partnering with Shortel and Mitel and Samsung as well. Uh, but then as the, in the 2010s, uh, Accent actually moved in to become a national cloud services provider. And we built out our Voice One platform and decided that we were wanted to step out and become a an actual cloud services provider, be the become a, a VoIP services network operator, and so that's the the direction that we've been moving uh, in the most last I'd say you know, five years, and it's been uh, very exciting for the organization. We operate uh, several offices in the U.S. Uh, in Columbus and Minneapolis, Minnesota as well. And then we have a, you know, a strong presence of, of folks across the U.S. that uh, might work in remote capacities or uh, providing support to our customers. I'd like to point out to people that there's some really good resources here. There are Voice One Info, the News and Blog, if you're interested in being an agent or partner, and also their uh, access on Twitter. What we have here is not only the VP of Sales, but you can actually contact Chris, the president of the company. And he's very interested in that you do contact him directly, especially since you may not know that much about Accent. Well, thank you very much, Chris, and I appreciate your time. Thanks, Gary.